Today's lesson is level two of the lesson on tolerances. So if you haven't seen that yet, you might want to check out that video first. In this lesson, we're going to take a look at different types of fits between the parts of an assembly. When designers and engineers design products made from more than one part, they have to make decisions about how those parts are going to fit together. Will they be tight fitting or will they be loose? Exactly how tight or loose? These are things that designers learn from experience and the context of the problem that he or she is working on. Some key questions we're going to be answering in this lesson are, what are the different ways that parts can be fit together? What is meant by the term MMC and how do I calculate allowance? So let's get started. The first type of fit we're talking about today is called a clearance fit. A clearance fit limits the size of mating parts so that a clearance or a space always results when mating parts are assembled. Take a look at the block game on the left. The blocks need to be able to slide easily through the correctly shaped hole for the toy to work. The pieces are designed so that there's always a small space between the block and the holes. Another example would be sliding drawers or the cup holder in a car. These aren't things that we want to have to force together so they're designed with a clearance fit. Here, the maximum size of the axle is 10 millimeters, and the minimum size of the hole is 10.15 millimeters. If these parts are manufactured within tolerance, there will always be a clearance fit between these two parts when the axle is inserted through the hole. Another type of fit is called an interference fit. In this case, the sizes of the mating pieces are limited so that there is always an interference between the parts when they're assembled. This type of fit is used when pressure between the parts is all that holds them together, such as the cap on a pen, the rubber tire stretched around the plastic wheel, or the toy bricks that snap together. For these products to function, there must always be interference between the parts. In this case, the minimum size of the axle is 9.92, but the maximum size of the opening is 9.90. Therefore, if the parts are manufactured within tolerance, then the axle will always be larger than the opening. This type of fit may be called a press fit or a force fit, such that the two parts must be pressed together in order to assemble them. Other times, one part will be heated to the point that it expands and fits onto the other part easily. Then, once it's cooled off and shrinks back down, the fit between the two parts is incredibly tight and can't be removed by human hands. The term transition fit is used to describe situations where mating parts may have a small clearance or interference depending on which end of the part's tolerance they were manufactured to. A transition fit typically results when the goal of the fit is to be exact, and the tiny amount of clearance or interference that results from incidental variations in manufacturing are negligible, meaning as long as the clearance or interference is small enough, it won't really affect the functionality of the product. A good example would be a gear that fits precisely on a drive shaft. The fit can vary somewhat. If it has a tiny clearance, the gear will slide onto the shaft more easily, and the shaft will still drive the gear. If it has a small interference, it might take a little firm pressure to push the gear onto the shaft. Either situation results in a working assembly, and ideally, the hole in the gear would be exactly the same size as the shaft. But as we know, all manufactured parts have some variation in their actual measurements. In this situation, the peg could be as large as 10.08 millimeters, and the hole could be as small as 10.05 millimeters, resulting in an interference. However, the very next assembly off the production line could have a peg as small as 9.95 millimeters and a hole as large as 10.15 millimeters, resulting in a clearance. Since both of these situations are acceptable within the tolerance of the parts, that makes this a transition fit. When we think about how parts fit together, there's a term to consider called the Maximum Material Condition, or the MMC for short. The MMC is the condition of the part when it contains the largest amount of material. So for an external feature, like the length of a plate or the diameter of a peg, the MMC is the upper limit of the dimension. For internal features, 
such as the diameter of a hole, the MMC would be the lower limit of the dimension. The smaller the hole, the more material exists on the part. We use the MMC to calculate the allowance between assembled parts. In a clearance fit, the allowance refers to the minimum amount of clearance between the two parts. In an interference fit, allowance refers to the maximum interference between the parts. To calculate the allowance between two parts, we subtract the MMC of the external feature from the MMC of the internal feature. This example shows a clearance fit, in which the MMC of the hole, the smallest allowable dimension, is 10.15 millimeters, and the MMC of the peg, the maximum allowable dimension, is 10.00 millimeters. When the MMC of the peg, the external feature, is subtracted from the MMC of the hole, the internal feature, we find an allowance or a minimum clearance of 0.15 millimeters. This example shows an interference fit in which the MMC of the hole, the smallest allowable dimension, is 9.85 millimeters and the MMC of the peg, the maximum allowable dimension, is 10.00 millimeters. When the MMC of the peg, the external feature, is subtracted from the MMC of the hole, the internal feature, the result is a negative value. We treat allowance as an absolute value, so the allowance, or maximum interference between these parts, is 0.15 millimeters. The term allowance is easily confused with the term tolerance. Remember that tolerances apply to specific dimensions on individual parts. They tell us how much that dimension of the part is allowed to vary. Allowance applies to assemblies between two parts and tell us how much space or interference must exist between the parts in order for them to function as intended. Hopefully now you know the answers to the key questions around the types of fit. What are the different ways that parts can fit together? We discussed clearance, transition, and interference fits, and saw some examples for each. What is meant by MMC? MMC is the maximum material condition of the part, or the condition in which it has the greatest possible amount of material. And for calculating allowances, we learned how to subtract the MMCs of the two assembled parts to figure out the minimum allowable clearance or maximum allowable interference between the parts. Hopefully this gives you a little better understanding of the kind of analytical problem solving that engineers do every day. Take a look at some technical drawings for mechanical parts and see if you can understand the dimensions and tolerances well enough to describe the types of fit and allowances between mating parts. Thanks for watching and good luck.